if you want your dogs to be well behaved in the car, you actually have to train them on car manners. Here's how I trained my dogs to be very well behaved in the car. In fact, now when they get in the car, they just lay down and take a nap. I hardly ever have them popping up to look out of the windows and they're never trying to do anything that could be dangerous in the car. So as always, if you are going to be traveling with your dogs, take safety into consideration. You may want your seatbelts for your dogs, your harnesses. You may want a crate or a gate. It depends on what vehicle you drive. Look all those things up. And then from the moment you get your dog or from right now, if you haven't done it when they were younger, I want you to start training them. And I want you to start by going twice a week somewhere on a car ride. Now, it is important to note I am not a dog trainer. This is just what has worked for me again and again and again with my dogs. And this is something that can work for your dogs as well if you want to give that a try. But always consult your trainer or your vet to see what's going to work best for you, for your breeds of dogs, etc. So I started from the day I got my puppies, I would take them out several times a week. You can do it twice a week, you can do it more, you can do it whatever works for you, but the more you can do it, the better they're going to learn. The key to my success, I feel, was actually going on car rides with multiple people. So I was actually able to have somebody else drive and I sat in the backseat like I am now and I actually rode with the puppies. And so I would sit in the back and I would teach them how to behave. I taught them car manners. And so I would clip them in, buckle them in. I would sit with them. I would hold them. I would show them how to look outside and how not to bark at people and how not to be worried about anybody walking by the car. We would drive somewhere and go do something. And I want you to start small. It doesn't have to be big. Drive down your driveway to go get the mail and drive back. It can be as literally as small as driving down the driveway and driving back teaching them in small increments that it's safe, that it's okay, that it's something that is a pleasant experience for them, especially if they only go in the car when you're going somewhere like the vet that they don't like, that can be a big hurdle to overcome. So small journeys and coming right back is going to help you. So start small if you are not working with like a puppy puppy and go down the driveway and then go down the street and then go down the road. You're going to go down a couple of blocks, whatever's going to work best for you. And you're going to increase it by small increments. And you're going to do this twice a week or more, whatever works for your schedule, but you're going to assimilate them to what you're doing in the vehicle. Then you can go for longer trips. Now I said, you're going to go and do something quickly and you're going to come back. I also like to go to stores and sit in parking lots. So like I said, for me, I would sit in the back with my dogs and then somebody else would be driving the vehicle. We would go and sit in a parking lot like I'm doing right now. And the other person would go into the store and I would sit with the dogs. We would learn how to interact in a parking lot environment. Then if I needed to go into the store, that person would sit with the puppies in the front or the back, depending on what we were working on training with. Then I would go into the store. They would learn how to behave in the car without me being there if we're traveling with other people. And because I had the ability to sit with my dogs and to train them on how to work as a functioning unit inside of the vehicle. And I'm talking about not jumping in the front seat, not jumping at the windows, not barking at people walking by. I am talking about not harassing us while we're driving, no crying, no whining, no whimpering, all of those things because I consistently worked on that and I did it in a repeated pattern. So at least twice a week, we were taking these puppies out for me. I actually took them out as much as I could. Anytime we had to go somewhere, they were coming with us so they could learn how to function inside of the vehicle. And that builds up to being able to very easily travel with my puppies. I went on a 12, yes, a 12 hour car ride and they did not make a peep. They sat with me in the back seat because it was our very first long journey. I wanted to make sure nobody was going to get car sick. And I sat in the back and everybody was quiet. They napped the entire time. We stopped a couple of times for potty breaks for the puppies. And other than that, right up to where we were going, no problems. And so because we trained in small increments and we made it longer and longer and longer. And, and when I'm saying longer, I mean longer trips. We would go down the street, but then we would also go to a store. And then we would go further away. We would go to a restaurant far away to pick up food. We would go places that were five minutes away, 10 minutes away, 15, 40 minutes, and we built it up. And then we also built up our parking lot stamina as well. So we would go to a store, run in, grab something, come right back out. Then we built up to more stores. So it would be our running all of the errands. We would go to one store, to the next store, to the next store, and we would be out for a few hours and then we would come back because we built those things up into what we were already doing. This was not necessarily going out of our way. At the very beginning, you will go out of your way to take them on those small trips to the mailbox, to the store, down the street, to whatever. Go out of your way to do that, but then just start building it into what you're already doing. If you're already running errands and somebody else is with you, take the dogs. You're going to train them as you go. It takes a few extra minutes if you have to take turns going into the store, but it's worth it to train the puppies because now I can go anywhere and do anything with my dog that it's incredibly easy to do. And again, 
It depends on what your motives are. Once you've trained them how to do this, you want to maintain this as well. So once a week, take them on a trip. Every two weeks, take them on a trip. You want to make sure they're in the car as often as you possibly can to keep them balanced and aware of how to behave inside of your vehicle as you're traveling and as you're doing things. So you want to make sure that you are spending your time and effort inputting good manners about car environments into your dogs, whatever you need to train them on from seeing people to how to ride when you're driving to managing their seatbelts and their harnesses to doing whatever it is that you need them to do. Train them now before you have to take that long trip, before you move, before you go do those interesting things in the car where they'll be sitting for long periods of time. Train them now with things you're already doing and just make it a part of your routine with your dogs to build it up from there. That works super well for me. I hope it works well for you as well. If you've got questions on how I got such good manners in my puppies that I did train from the time I got them to do all these really cool things, if you want to talk tricks, if you want to talk training, if you want to talk whatever, now is the time. We've been getting some really great uh, questions over in our DMs on Instagram. So feel free to reach out to us through our email or through any of our social platforms if you've got questions and we will get those answered for you. Follow along for videos on how you can be managing your dog lifestyle so that you can thrive with your puppies, with your dogs, live your best life while also including them in what you are doing inside of your life. We'll see you in the upcoming videos.